Hello, fellow alchemists. Welcome back. It's been quite some time since we did a video, so I think it's we're about due for one. And luckily, I ran into some Elixir issues, and doing this solution has helped me to solve them. Now, when you're working with a database, there's a lot you need to really understand, and I'm still learning, and I think I'm still relearning things that I've already learned in the past. Uh, a couple of things is I had to run into a way of how can I optimize a database query. And... Um, also find out which database queries I should be optimizing because I kept having timeouts with too many connections and they were waiting. And uh, in the end, using this trick, I managed to find out why something was going so slow based on finding which thing was going way too slow. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, what's really cool is now that we have telemetry for quite some time is that people are starting to use it. And so now it's our time to start using it in case you haven't. And what I'm going to show you is how can you use telemetry to figure out which database queries are running too slow. Over here, we have an existing project. The new thing I've done is I've created just a simple users table just to kind of show you what's happening. And so what I have over here is I'm going to just quickly create a kind of ecto logger. Ecto logger. And for my ecto logger, a simple module for the time being. And in my application, when I go to actually start up my application, I'm going to use telemetry to hook into this information. And so what I'm looking for is there's an attach function on telemetry. I need to give it a name. I'm just called actual logger. Now what event we want to listen for, and this is just a list of atoms. So we're going to listen for the name of our app, so it's called demo app. Listen for the repo and listen for any kind of queries. And then finally, uh, what is the name of our function? So we will be creating that function later on, but we do have the module. So this one's called demo app, echo logger, handle events, and it's an arity of four. And then finally, some kind of metadata, which we don't really need. Excuse me. I'm like that, so it looks a little bit nicer. So that's all we kind of need to get things started. And so we actually need to create this function. And what that function should have is a def handle event. And of course, we have to listen for our app, the repo, and the query. And what you want to listen for in order to figure out which kind of database queries could be a little bit too slow is there's this thing called query time that should be passed in. And also we can grab the query itself and the parameters. And with that, we can handle that. And it's always good to kind of have a, uh, I think it's called like, uh, we could just forget about it and just put data over here. I think this last one's called pretty big. And I think this one's called metadata, but I forgot what the second one is. Kind of a catch all in case something doesn't get passed through all the way. <coughs> and then now what we can do, we can bring in our logger. And we can actually start to log out the information. So what would be good? is we can just log out information saying that the query time is time. And we also have the query. And the so if I actually try to run this, The first thing I want to do is just go ahead and just insert information. So uh, create user, and we just want to create user. Uh, I forgot the fields that put on here. So we have just a name and age. So name, Alan, age 18, so I'm still young, right? There we go. And you should see within here, we have our thing. Hmm. We don't seem to actually have that coming through. 
maybe I missed something somewhere. So ecto logger, repo query, handle events. This one should be good. Let me just double check, make sure our repo is good. Demo app repo. This one should all be good. Let me see, make sure I got everything over here. <clears throat> Looks okay. Click the logger. Looks all good. Let's just try to grab that information. So maybe the query won't come in, but we can try this one. <clears throat> Demo app. Stop the user. And there we go. Make sure get everything correct. So what we can do There we go. It looks like something's not getting caught properly. But you can see all of our information getting locked out now. So it is all looking pretty good. Um, we must be missing something somewhere. So let's just take a look. Event. That one is demo app repo query. Looks good. Query time. So that's the metadata. Uh, query. Let's try it on this one. One, two, three. I'm uh, missing one. If I can work out. So that's why I didn't work out. Sorry about that. As we found out, it's most important. So now, if I try to uh, actually get that user, you'll see all working fine. So we have our query time with the query. So you see you have kind of a plain thing over here and also the parameters, but for some reason the parameters are not coming in all the way. Uh, I'm guessing this is because I think the one, that one should be a A maybe or something like that. So that could be why it's getting all weird like that. Um, but in any case, right, at least we have some data coming through. That's most important. Now, the next thing we need to do, <coughs> excuse me, is uh, the most important thing is this query time, right? This query time is some kind of native time format for your computer. And the easiest way to solve this one is we can say maybe time in MS or so milliseconds. And there's a system dot convert time. We pass in the time, and then you can say it's coming from native, which is the native time of your computer, to millisecond. And then we just run this one over here. And then I can just go ahead and update that. We can reload this demo app at the logger. Now if I grab it, <clears throat> so it broke. See system that convert time convert time unit, sorry. My fault. So uh, the big thing is, you know, just make sure you got everything right. So this part, we need to make sure we got the event. Uh, I forgot what this one is, metadata, something like that. Uh, maybe this one's metadata, I don't remember, but this is some config data we don't really need. Um, but we can grab the time from here, the query time. There's also other types of time, even the total time everything takes uh, with like bringing it into Elixir and everything like that, serializing back and forth. And then in any case, <clears throat> that time will be in the native time format which you can look up into the early information about what that is, but you can just use system.convert time unit uh, to convert that from whatever that unit is from the native format to millisecond, which makes it a little bit more understandable. 
And then now, if I try to run this again, so we have demo app, and then we have accounts, and then we have uh, the user. And you see over here, quit time at seven. And then I think if we say MS at the end, that'll probably make it much more readable. So you notice how you have this kind of stuff, but now you have the same information over here. Query time, one millisecond with query, and then gives you a whole query, plus the data that's coming through. So with this information, this is how you can start to kind of track down slow queries, things like that. Uh, and of course, once you have a time milliseconds, then you can say something like, you know, if, if the time in MS is greater than 500, so 500 milliseconds, then you can warn it or error it, whatever you want to kind of flag that information so you can fix that right away. In any case, this is Alan from Pangora. Please subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I wanted to make one last announcement is we have our Rust with Flutter.com course ready for you guys to go ahead and sign up on. So if you're interested in how to create uh, Flutter apps using uh, some Rust uh, components, go ahead and sign up. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.